I'm Helen, and I was just going to sort of set a bit of a landscape, really, in which um, Tina's work resides. And, um, you know, it's broadly speaking, um, falls into the, this kind of art and science collaboration, uh, which was fairly new in the mid-90s, um, although there had been those sorts of projects before, um, but is now fairly well established within our sort of process and practice. And I just wanted very briefly to talk about the other kinds of projects that, um, that you might find in this, this kind of context. Um, just to kind of position, because people work in very, very different ways um, in, in this, and just to position the different ways in which artists might appropriate science or scientists might appropriate art or at, you know, at the points when it particularly begins to work is when you get sort of true collaborative um, practice and thinking. So I'm just going to um, I'm just going to kind of very quickly go through a few links and I'm sure many of you if you're interested in this area of practice will be familiar with some of these things. Um, this one um, is victimless leather from Symbiotica and um, what I wanted to do was to show you a couple of projects where artists have really almost sort of immersed themselves and become scientists. Indeed, um, Symbiotica are now advisors on biotech and tissue culture to many scientists. And this particular victim of leather, leather, it's what it says really, it's a, it's a polycarbon mesh in the shape of a jacket, and this is a, this is a miniature version of it, that uh, they then overlay living tissue, uh, but not conscious tissue, um, to make a leather jacket, so it's as, it's you know so that they're, they're making a statement there about um, about the uh, about, about about the ways in which we the ways in which we use use animals for um, clothing and also for scientific research. And then I just wanted to mention Critical Art Ensemble, who. Um, I'm sure many of you, I mean, they've been going for a very long time now, since the late 80s. And this most recent project, Marching Plague, um, was Steve Kurtz, um, who is kind of known as an activist, has, has actually um, rubbed shoulders. And it was, had a very famous legal case um, about possession of... Um, biomaterials, which I won't go into, but you know, he's, he's certain, that's, that's, that's what his, his biggest claim to fame is at the moment. But with Arts Catalyst, he went to the Isle of Lewis and simulated um, an experiment, oops, simulated an experiment that the, the MOD conducted um, during wartime, which was basically, um, basically letting the plague back that bacillus over and seeing how far it scattered across an island in, um, in, in the Outer Hebrides. And what he did was simulate it with the common cold virus. But again, what he did was really he, he became, he put himself, it was almost a reenactment, well, it was a reenactment, he put himself in the role of, of the scientist and, and, the, and the experimenter. So that's, that's, one, that's one side. It's almost kind of using science as activism making comments about the ways in which science are, are used in perhaps the mainstream or the institution. And then I, I'd like to move on now to moving it more into the realms of Tina's practice to notions of human-computer interaction. And um, there's an artist, Alexa Wright, who did a piece called um, a Conversation Piece with Alf Linney. I don't know what's happening here. I seem to have to... Yeah, it's just because it's... Okay. Um, I mean, you could, I'm just giving you... A, I'm just letting you know that these things are online. You can just put them into Google. But basically what you had here was, a, um, was something based on the Eliza bot, um, which was a, a, was, was a voice simulation, or it was actually text-based when it first came out in the... Oh, I can't remember. I think it was the 60s or early 70s. 
Um, and basically, this, this was something that, that, used, that, that picked up keywords and picked up conversations with you and, uh, or pick, picked up sentences that you, you, you said and then would pick up keywords from them and respond to you. And people, people really felt that they were having a conversation with the computer, even though it was a set of algorithms. And what, what uh, Alexa did was pull this into a kind of sculptural space, so you began to have a conversation with the sculpture. So here we have a kind of simulation of... Um, of, of, of an interaction with the machine and an interaction with, with human. And um, Tina's work, which we're about to go into in some more detail, is really sort of taking this one step further, I think. Um, I'd like to just talk... I mean, what, what, ti what Tina is doing here, really, is um, looking at real subjects rather than... So centering it around the machine, she's looking at real subjects and looking at that interaction, um, and that is a slight difference from some of these, from from something like conversation piece. And I think the other thing that's really critical to Tina's practice, just taking it out of this notion of human machine interaction, it's actually the process that she's been through. So she's not put herself into the role of the scientist. She's maintained herself very much. I'm sorry, talking about you in the third person here, but maintained yourself very much in terms of, um, in terms of being an artist and being a, an image maker, while working in parallel with all these different kind of strands. So. Um, mind reading technology at MIT, Hugo Critchley's neuro, neuroscience and physiology, and physiology, and Chris Frith's, um, Frith's, Frith's psychology and neuroscience, and working with these things in parallel, have that brought new co connections and new collaborations. And it's almost as though these things would have just carried on, you know, on this trajectory, but now they've kind of merged and meshed, and there's a, there's a real sort of sense of something else emerging. And I think that's the point at which I'd like to hand over to Tina, having just given a little bit of a backdrop of the, the scene that this is working in. <laughs> 